Welcome to The Downside. How are you doing, Russell? I'm good. How are you? I'm not great. You know why? Now, listen, we're releasing this. We're recording this a little bit early. What? You... Uh, we're recording this a little bit early, so this this is going to date the episode. Okay. Last episode, you had a great rant. A great rant about people who complain about daylight savings time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you noted several times that it's never going to change. Daylight savings is never going away. Okay. And I rushed my ass off. To get the video uploaded, audio fixed, uh-huh. so I could clip it for daylight savings time. Uh-huh. What do you think 90% of the comments said, Russell Daniels? Oh, it's, is it changing? It's changing. There was a lot. I looked, there was legislation that passed or something. But when is it changing? It didn't change yet. It's going to change by next year. Why? But your whole thing was, was, was predicated on. It will never change. You said it 10 times. And I was like, this is great uh, material. I wasn't, and everyone. I wasn't right. You know, I just saw that yesterday, too. And uh, I, I almost sent you a message but i didn't well don't worry our fans sent the message it. to me so i oh i'm sorry it's fine it's fine this we need a fact checker on the show i know this is not joe rogan russell as much as you want it to be yeah, yeah, yeah. um uh, uh welcome sabrina to the to the podcast we have a stand-up comedian writer sabrina Wu. hello hey it's it's good to be here well, i also heard about the daylight savings thing and and i also thought it sounded super fake like and, that it's changing but it is everyone is saying it but I've never seen primary source material. I know. And I'm also... I'm, I'm going to release this clip and someone's going to say listen, it changed just now. Uh, listen, I'm sure... I, th- I think it's wishful thinking. Like, it's going to change everywhere because some places have... Like, I think Arizona. In certain places in Arizona, they don't recognize it. But That's I, even more I don't know stressful. how that works. Uh, so, I, <laughs> But I don't know. I mean, I have not seen, like, someone say it's definitely changing. It feels like it's all hearsay. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Sabrina, can you, can you tell us something negative to kick off our, our theme music to get into this? Uh, something like you don't ne- like? Anything? What, something? Uh, how are you feeling? You, you, something shitty that happened to you recently? Anything? Oh, sure, sure. I mean, it's... Um, I guess I've been talking about... I, I recently did do The Tonight Show, and that was cool. Um, you, you really mistook my direction. No, you just but said just a let me continue. Thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I dread it every. Se- I, I dread every second of having to put anything of myself on the internet, mm. and I think especially like I was. You know, I'm just like, I don't think the internet loves like trans people, and I was very scared, and I thought I created this. Like, is this too long for your intro? No, no, no this great. Is, okay, this is just the thing that's on. My, that is what I want to hear about. why the Tonight Show isn't all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> that's I love that. <laughs> I guess I'm just so sad because I I thought I curated this like perfect set that was like so like angry and kind of like self-hating that I thought like even men would really like it. Like they would kind of like see themselves. Me, I didn't mention being trans until like four minutes into the set. I never said my pronouns. And I was just so like angry and upset. I was like, they're going to love it. Like I'm so raw. And like, I, I felt like I, I felt like my own version of like Bill Burr in it. And then like the top comment thread right now on that clip is, um, is a genuine debate about whether or not I'm having a severe nervous breakdown. Oh. On the set. Well, why would you no. say something like that? Russell, <laughs> when I sent you the clip, that was just to familiarize yourself with our guest. Yeah, And I did sign it. Russell Daniels from John Marco's the downside. Yeah. You yeah. had a tremendous set. Thank you. It was a it was a very good late night set, and Russ will tell you I don't say you that do to not anyone. Say that. No. So it was a very good set. And they said it privately too. So Wait, that means good. a lot, and I and it does always mean more from people who shit on other people's sets. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Of course, yes. of course. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. this whole podcast. Yeah. Because if you're falsely positive, then your good things mean nothing. Yes. This is the downside. Oh, whoops! Fuck. God damn it! John God damn it. I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Where Wait, is I, it? I, I no no. It's I didn't do that. It's because I didn't put up the volume. Wait, what oh, second? This is so Wait, embarrassing. Listen, this is good. This is a good way to get into the. <sighs> I need a tech person really quick. Okay, hold up. Here it goes. This has to clear, and then once it clears, it goes back. Okay, uh, say one more time. Say, uh, what, what, what did the top comments say? Um, oh. Okay, <laughs> great. I'm just, just <laughs> relive yeah, your relive trauma. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And do you, remember to do your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I said the top comment on this really important life career milestone was um, uh, it was uh, it was uh, basically I can't tell if this person is having a severe nervous breakdown or if this is just personal. Okay. This is the downside. I'm gonna kill myself. Why would you do this to me? What is that? Oh my god, this is the worst moment of my life. What is this? Okay. 
It's so funny because you said you hate putting things on the internet. And the first thing after your amazing set, you talked about beatboxing. And I said, where can I find Sabrina beatboxing? And there it was. This is amazing. It's like genuinely like, oh my God. Sabrina, you I would kill to beatbox as well as you do. No, you get this. You get this. Like if you, okay. It's like I am, no beatboxer would say I'm good. Do you know what I mean? It's like when like a 16 year old kid you are does just like right, a, So you got to be a great beatboxer too. But I understand. If that. I were a great beatboxer, I wouldn't use it exclusively for jokes on the Tonight Show. <laughs> I would be competing. And I think I think you and Usama could have a like comedian slash beatboxer competition. Yeah. I let me tell you the reason I think it's good is because I tried to beatbox in high school, and compared to me, what's like a what's the best beatboxer in the world? I don't know your pentatonics <laughs> level. Oh my god, you know nothing about beatboxing. <laughs> that's my point, and that's why you're playing this clip. <laughs> pentatonics. <laughs> what? Kevin's fine. Kevin, the beatboxer, he plays like cello. He's great, but like, I mean, I think he's. Oh, I don't, I don't want to like tear down Kevin. I think he's great. I mean, he's not doing it like competitively. Like, I, I promise you, I don't know all our listeners, but I do know which ones are not listening. <laughs> and Kevin from Pentatonix is definitely not in there at all. Oh, are your listeners not Although Swedish we'd, boys? We'd love from... to have him on. We do have a listener, I think, who helps produce Pentatonix. Do we? You, you could be honest about beatboxing. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, sure, sure. Kevin sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the downside. One, two, three. <laughs> downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Sabrina, your set was so good. I feel Are so you... duped. I feel... Oh, I'm oh. sorry. No, but in a no, in a great way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He does that to me a lot. He plays like Oh no, uh, I can I can cut it out don't if you even, like. Don't even, don't even. One time my dog died great. and he I was very sad about it. And then he came in the next day and he played a song that he was him being like, sorry, your dog died. Sorry, your dog. It wasn't to that song. It, it was, was to one of our other songs. Okay, but it was still a song about my dog dying, and I didn't it know was, you were going to uh, play it. It was, uh, how did it go? Was it that I've got some bad, bad news, oh, bad news? something like that. How yeah. is your dog? Yes, it was Hennessy. a new segment. It was a new Hennessy. segment about how is my dog who just died. We um, have some misses. Yes. That stuff, that's darker than what you did to me. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought mine was like light. Like I a know. fun yeah. thing. But emotionally, I went through a real journey because when your thing wasn't working, I was like, oh, I guess, you know, I was just listening to the podcast. Maybe I could like acapella it or like offer, but I then had a voice in my head that was like, don't do it. It's so embarrassing. Like, oh. if you be like, you'll feel ashamed let's after. Talk let's, get I, let's, let's, let's talk about this voice. Let's talk about this voice in your head that is, you're, you're so, okay. Mm -hmm. You're, you're multi talented. I, I had someone. Maybe I told someone that you were going to be on the podcast or something, and they said they knew you as when you were dancing. Because you dance too, right? Who the fuck would have said that? I was never a professional or even close. I just like... You dance. I mean, some of this you brought on yourself. You did all these talents on The Tonight Show. Of course. Of course, because someone five years ago was like, oh, you should do all these acts together. I thought it was stupid then, and now I'm like, I guess this plays well sometimes, and so I, I do do it, yeah. Sabrina, this, this... But only for comedy. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if I ever took it seriously, it would be humiliating. Sure. But you can, you can dance comedically. Sure. I've been doing it. That's what I do on stage. That's half my act. But... <laughs> We just have, listen, it's for, for me, I think I admire it because I did beatboxing and pop and lock. And did you really? I did do pop and lock. Okay. Uh, my, my, I mean, like, it was at a, it was at a private high school where there were like three people who did it and I was the third best. So it's like, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, it, this competition was low, but I could do it. I could do, I went, uh, uh, I was, I really liked tutting. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, tutting? Do you know what tutting is, Russell? No. So tutting is all about like uh, angles. So you have like you know like. Okay now. Oh, wow. I, I, now that I'm seeing you do it, I've I've seen that you've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah, all the time. And and uh, I did a little bit of popping. Oh fuck yeah! I mean, I yeah. remember when I. Oh, um, I remember when I first met you, at that uh, when we were doing that show, and one of the very first rehearsals was like an improv thing, and you were doing a lot of like. Popping and locking in the oh my microphone's cutting out is do you hear that or is it maybe just my headphones maybe it's just your headphones oh <clears throat> um anyways you were doing a lot of pop and locking the first night I met you at that improv rehearsal and what did you think of it at the time be I thought this guy I, I appreciate he's going for it 
but like I remember it, was, it felt like it felt like if not knowing you, it felt like that was one of the first three things you would tell people about. Do you know what I mean? By the amount that you did it that night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I thought I thought you were going to be way more into it. Once I got to know you, I was surprised you weren't as into it. As How old are you, you in this moment? Twenty five. Oh, I thought you meant like in this. You said when I did this. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah. Probably twenty five. OK. But like I wasn't like. Uh, uh, a respectable boogie walking year old. into the room. <laughs> I wasn't wiggle walking up to my castmates. I just like like in the ex in some improv where it was like you know do something. I would bust out it those was, moves. It was like fifteen minutes. I of struggle. <laughs> fifteen whole minutes. God, can you imagine? I, I'm someone who struggles. Like I'm definitely on a dance floor. I like I struggle. Like if I'm drunk or high, I can dance. But if I'm not, I'm like stiff. So then I like the choreo. It lets me. I took hip hop classes for a while, but what was your what was your b boy, b boy, b girl, b b? Is there is there a non binary b term? Oh, I don't know. You know, I left I left that craft. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. As soon as I realized I was trans, I left I left the whole industry. B boy, b boy was like. Uh, I think b boy can term. be a gender inclusive. Yeah, I agree. Term. Yeah, I agree. Um, so tell me about your your pop and lock journey. Well, I famously never came up with a name. And I remember I went to my first cypher. It was so humiliating because it was like, in this corner, we have, it was, um, oh my God, like Lady Killers and like B-Boy Shabazz. And in this corner, S Sabrina Wu and <laughs> Chris Lynn. <laughs> Chris Lynn. Neither of you had a name. No, we didn't names, have a name. We didn't names. really know. We were really new to the world. Um, but yeah, like, I actually forgot your original question. So... Wait, sorry, there's a piece of white fluff in your mic. Forgive me. Okay. When I, I, I want to know your, your oh, whole, my origin your story. origin story for, for just for, for B Boy. It was okay, so I mean to be clear, I never really I never I didn't do any breaking, really. Like I would yeah. on the like at a at Okay. I mean, this all starts with bar mitzvahs in Ann Arbor and in my particular private high school. I'm shocked that there were like three people who popped in lock at a private institution yeah i was the only one and that was and i think i was maybe like one oh you know what you, actually every other year there was like there was like a dyke who would who would start can i say that on this yeah there yeah. was a the i can say that <laughs> no russell oh you got me i got, you I got my move gonna, i knew you're gonna do it to um, me but um yeah, say it anything. Felt, it felt like it skipped a generation. Every other year, there was like one kid per class that got really into popping and locking. And then like, <laughs> I'm getting so sidetracked. But but I I basically just like also felt very uncomfortable at dances. And then like, there were so many dances because we like the we just had a lot of Jewish kids at school. We, and, and they would invite everyone in the whole group. I, I went to like, does this feel like a lot? To, I mean, for a not Jewish person, I went to like thirteen bar mitzvahs. No, that's like, a lot. Definitely, no, that's a lot. I, like, I didn't have a bar mitzvah. I'm Jewish, but I grew up in a Jewish area, and I would say probably thirteen to to sixteen. That's yeah, it's it's a lot for most people. They don't go for to a single bar mitzvah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, were they like were they nice bar mitzvahs? Were they were they uh, rich like big bar mitzvahs? Were there different sizes? They were all in one country club. So I think they were rich, but they didn't really, there was like a peak to like how yeah, fantastic sure. they were going to be. We had one, I didn't go to it, but the, the guy got uh, in sync for his daughter's bot mitzvah. Oh my God. No, we had the, I got a feeling over and over again. <laughs> kind of a, <laughs> one, one guy from Michigan screaming yeah. the lyrics. <laughs> MC, do you know what I'm t like that yeah, moment? Yeah, 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 yeah. We all shout Mazel Tov in that the one part. Oh, they love it. Yeah. yeah, I used to have it where I talk about the birthright joke because I got a speed bar mitzvah on the birthright, and the joke it's only if a lot of Jews are there. I said, you know, we did it's a speed bar mitzvah, but we did all the traditional things: cha cha slide, electric slide, baby got back because yeah. that was the standard. Yeah, baby got back. Just to think about thirteen year olds and twelve year olds just singing very loudly. My anaconda don't want none mm -hmm. unless you got buns hunt. Mm -hmm. And it's just very, very sexual mm -hmm. for a bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. But that's where you started. Now, did you take, I took classes. Did you just learn on your own? I didn't, I didn't take any classes for like popping and where did you grow up? Potomac, Maryland. You're well, like, like, you're like, do you grow up like inner DC? <laughs> I did know. Did you grow up on the streets? You'd learn about, no, I had like, it was like, at that time, we're like popping and locking for the first time was being, I think, like being taught at like dance studios that have ballet, hip hop, pop and lock class once a week. 
beginner to advanced because there was not a lot. Of- well, I'm glad they had that because I did take like a hip hop class and that's very different than For it sure. was like it was giving like Camp Rock High School Musical like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or at least the ones that I went to. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it really helped the one time I took a, uh, yeah, it was mostly like self-taught through YouTube. Sure. Who did you watch? Do you watch Mr. Wiggles? No, he was, he, honestly, if this makes sense, like he felt kind of old, like his video seemed a little bit, there was this guy and I'm so embarrassed. His name was like the Russian tiger. And his, if you Googled like popping tutorials, it was like all, all top 10 of those videos were from this guy who is now, I think like a biochemist. Really? Oh. Yeah. Good for him. And okay, since we're shitting on so many of my YouTube heroes, <laughs> the Russian tiger is a bad teacher in the sense that like makes great videos, but was a white biochemist. Like if you learn from him, you had the worst style yeah. of mm. any pop. Mm. I just was like so robotic and bad. And and not like the good robot, like bad. Yeah, just like, you know mm. what I mean? It's just like, it's very technical, but it doesn't really have any flow. Mm. No Mr. Wiggles, musicality. like I got a couple of videos. This is how old school Mr. Wiggles is. I bought his like VHS tapes <gasps> and you'd, he'd mail you. I'm sure he did it. He was, you know, he was packaging it himself. And it was just kind of like shitty quality videos of him just, if you got the tutting videos, just him tutting at various <laughs> places what? for an hour. And you'd watch and you'd be like, that looks, I'd love some step by steps. I was looking for some more like paint by numbers, pop and lock. Yeah. Well, that's where the Russian tiger came in. Yeah. I, I think actually go back to, it's like that. You ever see that old hip hop? It's like a classic. It's like a white lady who's like, and now we're going to do the, the lock. And it's just like her in like a jumpsuit. Oh. And it just has this, just this feel of a uh, uh, lack of authenticity. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you're, so you're, you're, you're doing, I mean, this is a very artistic life that you're leading. The, <laughs> The, sure. the the beatboxing was that just for were you in an acapella group because that's how I oh no Sweetie, you're so embarrassed about your past I'm so embarrassed yeah I guess that's what I'm learning I just oh I dread thinking about myself in every corner this sounds but... like a podcast is your is your nightmare truly it's uh... absolutely <laughs> absolutely I went on a run and I meditated before this <laughs> and when I found out this was 90 minutes long I was like I, I should call in sick <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's so interesting because because you're a stand up comedian. That and you do talk about yourself on on stage. I do. I'm pretty. I know. I am pretty personal. And I guess what I like about stand up, it's like if I have to talk about myself, I want to do it in a format where it's a different group of strangers every time, and I just get to edit the shit out of it until control. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and none of the strangers will like start playing your beatboxing from the audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right when you crazy. feel most safe. Yeah. Or- <laughs> that was that was an insane move. That was really, no, I, really crazy. It's like so fair. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's so funny. That video is also like posted from like this, my one of my high school classmates that I just had terrible beef with for like years and years. Really? I saw like nightmares about him. But yeah, oh, he has God, ownership this was deeper over this. Than I thought. I know. What was the beef I think, about? I think you could ask them to take it down. Oh, I know. He's like, like he told And I saved it now, too. Well, so now I have two people, too. I should. Yeah, I should ask him to take it down. That'd be, that'd be the right thing for them what to do. What was the beef about? Or no, can't get into it. It was. No, I'm happy to get into it. I mean, it was like, it was stupid as shit. It was like, it was around like, well, see, I did think of myself as like an artistic person then. Um, and like, I definitely also wanted to get into film, but he was like the film, you know, like small schools, like people have their assigned yes. roles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was like the film kid and like every spirit week, like, you know, like there were like these like music videos that were a part of like some larger spirit. It's so stupid and boring, but I think just one year I was like, oh, I'd really like to make the video. And I started floating that idea around and he never, and he also wanted to be class president. And like, mm-hmm. I was sort of a contender for that. And then we just never. So you, you ran against each other. We I mean, ran against each other. It's tough to come wow. back from that. I lost. So he, he won. He won. He won. He actually had a crazy redemption arc. Like when he was in middle school, I would say like multiple women and people of color left our school as like a direct result of some of like the things that he would say. Oh in middle God. school. In middle school. Like, in middle school. Like he was Where kind of a conditioned, terror. Conditioned to be shit on in yeah, middle yeah, yeah. school. That's, that's really extreme. Wow. And I just want to say like, I heard, you know, I know people change and I've heard, I'm saying this to camera. This is to, You've to heard him. Changed. I've heard, I've heard mixed things, but I believe. <laughs> 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 make, 
appreciate you asking him to take the video down before it. he listens to the pod. I know. Uh, uh, that's, I, I believe that there's no way he is walking around with the same beliefs or like habits oh he had as like God. a 13-year-old. What, do what you is, think, do you, okay, like, okay, okay, hear me. Okay, do you think like, do you think that like, oh, this is going to give me so much hate on the internet, but like, do you really think like, like the think of the worst people from your high school, like, yeah. and especially like the men who are being like bad in ways that are like, mad, like, you know what I mean? Like promoted by. Yeah. Yeah. Do you really think they change over the course of college where there are frats and like, it just gets worse? Like, I don't. I'm trying to think people in my life who who have made significant who like big changes. Well, it's hard because they a lot of them I feel like they get married and then they have kids, and so I don't really think of them as they just seem like. I don't yeah, know. I think life events like big life events maybe can change you. I've known people who like came out of the closet after they were younger. Part of me is like. Oh well, that's a lot of baggage to carry in whatever. So maybe that I'm the first up. to forgive a person who's gay. I'm sure. the first to be like, yeah. oh, I change everything that I feel. But um, yeah, I hear you. Uh, do you think if you went back now with like your mind now, could you win that presidential race? Do you remember? No, like- I think I was doomed. I can't. Believe- I would have told myself, don't <laughs> run. <laughs> what was don't- your platform? I think- Let me make the music video. <laughs> No, I gave up on that. I think I ran on something like, I just think we should all be like nice to each other. And that was read really passive aggressively, as I remember. What well, they, like, they I said mean, I, they, and I wasn't not big passive aggressive. I was like, some people on our grade are not particularly nice to other people in this grade. And, yeah. and that was a stupid idea. I think it's stupid. Yeah. I think it's, um, I thought it was stupid to try to win over the affection of. Is this too depressing for the no, downside? I feel like I just veered no. into like, no, this no, is no, actually no. too down. Well, high school this trauma is, is high school the trauma. name of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, okay. So so you grew up in Ann Arbor. Yes. I've been to Royal Oak uh, to oh, do a comedy. Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle? Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. I do, I do, I have, I got a bit from there because I asked someone there. I said, is there a good place to get a salad around here? And they said, it's a pretty liberal area. <laughs> and that became like a whole. But how far is Ann Arbor from Royal Oak? It's like a forty-minute drive. Okay. Yeah. So. And I do know that because I've I've gone up there. It's a fun. It's a oh, fun yeah. venue. It's a, I'd, I'd like to come back, Mark. Uh, you your parents were immigrants. Yes. Yeah. And did they did they go straight to Ann Arbor? Is that like a place that that immigrants went to? <laughs> at that time, like, is it a place that a lot of immigrants? Like, why did, why Ann Arbor? Totally. So I think it's because of the college and also because of the, like, automotive industry. So mm. I, I wouldn't say it's, like, California, like, where, like, yeah. there are actually, like, but, but yeah, like, I mean, my mom actually came for grad school, went to the University of Cincinnati, but, like, uh, she started, like, dating my dad, and that's why, and then my dad started, like, a business in Arbor, and that's why we stayed there. But, like, there are, there are a decent number of, like, Asian Americans with, like, immigrant parents, mostly, like, I think the majority are, like, probably professors or, like, like engineers mm. at, at Ford. Where did they immigrate Jim- from? My parents from China. Yeah. But there's, like, I don't know, people from all over. Where, where in China? Like, Do, do you know China no, like that? No, but I'm curious. No, I'm more curious. <laughs> I'm more curious, like... Does it does it af- affect like what kind of life they had if it was a different part? I mean, China's so big. Totally. So like where like where and, in China? And you have Heilongjiang material that you really want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dying to get into it. <laughs> no, uh, they they came from my my dad is from like northern China, like super northern. Like, have you heard of um, like Harbin? Like, there's like that big ice festival that sometimes gets talked about internationally. No, I haven't heard you of it. You actually should check it out because it's crazy, the, like, sculptures they build of ice. It's, like, genuinely, like, castles and slides and, like, oh. walls and, like... You can actually go down the slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Like, it's so cold, so they can, like, build, like, I guess, like, real infrastructure out of, like, ice blocks. <laughs> They're building full hospitals. <laughs> totally. <Yeah. laughs> There's, like, a... Be- yeah. Um, and then my mom is from, like, super south china the only thing they say about like children of that combination is that they're supposed to be super hot like really north sexy. And south yeah if you mix north and south you get a really hot baby <laughs> it's like what they say yeah in in china that's what they say they're like whoa i'm so scared to be misquoted on this but i think no, so don't be yeah yeah right, i don't think i, mean, right. I haven't I think, looked at I, I don't know how many listeners we have in china 
I'd love to. I'd love to go to China. Although, can I just say, anytime some video goes up of me on the internet, China does catch wind of it. When yeah. I was like in high school, like on a very local level, I was nominated to be like best Ann Arbor area girls basketball player. Your skills again. <laughs> Look, I was okay. I was like, not that like, to this day. I'm like, I, I can't bring myself to go to open gyms. Cause I am not like really, um, but China freaked out. They were like, Oh my God, there's like a Chinese girl. That's like good at basketball in America. Like the land of basketball. They were so shook. And I ended up the second place girl got like 600 votes and I had 200,000 votes because like from China? Because China chipped in. Yeah, it was crazy. That is crazy. And they made the votes public. Can you imagine being that second place? Was it close? Was it close? Her family, Not at her all. family, the, that girl's family, they all like rallied around her. They're like, oh. we all voted. We all voted. <laughs> but China. It was such, and it was so upsetting because the, the second place, like, I don't remember the exact digits, but it was like, it was like a six, you know what I mean? It was like yeah. that big of a difference. And it was such a robbery because like she was at the lead and then she went to bed, which is when Chinese people oh. wake up. And then overnight, I just got like, hundreds of thousands of more votes that would make me believe in uh, election fraud i gotta say if i was going to bed yeah. and i was winning and i woke up and i was losing by one hundred ninety nine thousand yeah. four hundred votes like oh, oh, something's up you here you lost the whole country that's so funny well i'm always so curious with with china what like i don't know what they have access to in terms of like podcasts or youtube or like i don't know what the censorship or what apps it just seems like that's why i don't think there's anyone who listens to the downside I'm China. sure there are though. I don't. I don't know. Well, let's ask Paige. She'll get the numbers for us. <laughs> I had to say something <laughs> for a second, Russell. I thought you were being very racist out of nowhere because Paige is Japanese. No, she's our producer. And I thought you were saying. <laughs> and for a second, oh I God. for a second, I for a second, I thought Russell was like, "Let's just ask Paige. She'll know." And no, I was like, "How the she's fuck, our Russell? What the fuck is she wrong with She sends us reports. Do you read them about okay, how many people we're not are releasing listening? this episode? Okay, okay let's Jesus keep going. Christ. So, uh, no, just for the moment, so I was just like. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the I fuck? The guy's a monster. I was like, well, she sends the reports saying where people are living and stuff. Um, can I just ask? I'm you also say getting the you... sense. I just, as I've just sort of like been following you on, I, to be honest, see myself a lot. And you're like, you also seem like some, like, I mean, if you also beatboxed and <laughs> did, tried out, for, I tried out for so many acapella groups. Uh huh. And I know that you also. I, I would have done musical theater. I think if I if I were born in in a different race and body. But like, sure. Yeah. I, I, I did basketball too, but very poorly. So I think you're you're like a, a superior version of yeah. of me. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been on the Tonight Show. We both did new faces. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. You're right. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 No. I. Yours. But you're tall. And and. <laughs> No, no but this really became tall. like a compliment off. We've yeah. never had it. I know, I'm like, like, I mean, do you, I can list all the ways in which I feel inferior to you. Well, I'm older, so I am your superior. Great. That's how, I'm your elder. I will never do crowd work. I, I avoid it like. like Why? You've, you're so accomplished. But that, but you see the theme. I just, yeah. But where does, so where does that come from? Okay, so, okay. You have, you have these parents, your siblings. I do have a, I have a brother and I have two parents, yeah. And his name is Kevin? I have two parents. Uh, his name is Kevin. Yes. Yeah, because you said it on the. T oh on the yeah, yeah. Show. I was wondering where you got all this information on me, but I guess literally, if you watch, your set, your set yeah, was I packed. It was. It had a lot of personal information. That's what course. made it so they, good. Well, they tell you to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, so okay, so you're the oldest. I am the oldest. You're the oldest. Okay, we have that in common too. Great. There you go. Uh, and and do you feel? Do you did were your parents into all this stuff that you were doing? Were they like, oh, cool, what's beatboxing? No. no. I remember I would be like, I remember like three years into beatboxing, like I'll just beatbox very quickly, but I would be like in the kitchen, like I was like practicing and I'd be like. And there was just like one day where I was like, like my parents were both there and I was like, are you two like gonna react? Like, is that, <laughs> does that, that like surprise crazy. you at all that I can do that? I was like, listen. Mm -hmm. They're like nothing, like because I would do that all the time. I love the idea of, of your immigrant parents 
in the kitchen and you make that noise and you're like, uh, can that I noise, get a wow? The, all those noises. So many noises. And then you're just like, are you? And they're like, sweetheart, it's, it's, it's not the variety of noises that were... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, and it wasn't like I did it once. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's how kind of like, and I'm not saying they're unsupportive. And I think this is like, like, I think immigrant parents show love in very like particular ways. And, um, but yeah, it was like so normal for them not to respond. Like it would have been three years of me knowing how to do that, doing it all around the house. And it just like, it never occurred to me like, Hey, maybe they should react or like be a little surprised. Well, I was like, <laughs> and my mom, I remember turning around and was like, Oh, you know, I, I, uh, is that hard to do? Is like, what, <laughs> what she asked me. I would have said, you, you go. Now you make that sound. And then, then they'd be impressed. That's so, okay. So do you think that's, do you think looking back on it now, you're like, oh, I didn't get a lot of that artistic support. I, I will say that I don't have a lot of very nice, like, uh, uh, I get this criticism a lot. Like. Like if someone compliments me, they're like, why do you look in pain? Or like, why do you look so upset? And it's like, I'm really like trying to be like really nice. But I think it's like, I just don't, it is a little bit of like a foreign language to have someone like be verbally like, to, or like to have that voice. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I just like, oh, I, I think don't know. Like, I think similarly with, with my parents, not to the same degree, but I think it can be tough if one isn't artistically inclined to understand why what you're doing in the beatboxing is cool, is interesting, is a skill. I, I remember once I had my, I had, we had a piano, a Yamaha and, and like, I was just like, I don't know what I was doing exactly. Cause I couldn't play piano, but I was like doing things with the sounds and I was like making a symphony. And I, I like had my dad, Come into I was to witness making it. Making a symphony. I was just like I was just like making. I was trying to like tell casually, a story. Casually. I was trying to like tell a story and and something. Mm -hmm. And I remember I showed it to my dad, and he was like, "Okay, what 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 is that supposed to be?" Yeah. And it's like a thing where I I can't be mad at him for not being like, "Whoa, yeah. you press some buttons." But it hurt because it was like, oh, you don't see that I'm trying to create yeah. poorly, but it's 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 hard because I just don't know. I think the parent more like doesn't know what to do. They don't know even know what to say yeah, yeah. At, at the at the noise. What was the, the noise? The the oh sure like yeah yeah there's yeah that. and and they just go I don't know what what this yeah. is I I don't know what to say. <laughs> Have you ever talked to okay? You did the Tonight Show. Did your parents say anything? Uh, you know what? No, my mom actually did text we watched, and I thought you were great. The Tonight Show is so tricky because, the tr unfortunately, like, the transitioning and career stuff, they're all happening at, like, the same time, mm -hmm. and my parents are, mm -hmm. like, also adjusting to, like... Sure. So I'm doing, like, a tough thing on them where I'm, like, hey, I'm trans, and I'm also going to talk about it publicly you know so yeah. i think like yeah <clears throat> i think of things they were going to be nice about the tonight show wasn't going to be like the thing that they were like we are so happy you did that sure um, sure although i was but also even i think if there wasn't the transfer a recent conversation i had with my mom was she was like she was like why do you do this like why do you like like comedy and i was like well you know like don't you love to laugh and she said no like i don't think yeah. like it's not even just about art like i i actually think there might even be like a cultural thing with like mainland china like i don't think it's like a very like safe face country like you like it's really important to like seem poised and i actually think that like being funny or goofy is like bad is lame yeah. uh -huh. on or a like, fundamental or like level allowing yourself to like lose control and laugh exactly is like lower is like you're out of control you're not like maybe there's yeah that's interesting but it's not but i also don't want to paint them as like people who never laugh like my what makes them do, do they ever watch like my father watches a naked gun and it's like goofy shit makes him laugh but anything like Con contemporary stand-up none of that does it totally for yeah my dad loved bridesmaids appear like apparently wow. like surprisingly when Very my stepfather saw fucking when my stepfather i saw borat in theaters with my stepfather yeah. he is a strict bun-up guy 
and that scene where they're they're running they're wrestling yeah. around naked it was amazing to see him laugh that hard because part of it was like oh you could feel like this more often yeah yeah could, but like it, it wasn't until yeah. two hairy men just dicks in the face that he mm. unlocked it for him yeah so like your dad loved bridesmaids. That was that was the thing. It was like the shitting in the sink, and your dad he was like, "I can't contain this anymore." Yeah, he was like, "That's fun." <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So you said you said uh, 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 coming out as trans is a more recent thing. Yeah, it's been like the last like two years. Like two years ago, I was like kind of starting to like talk about it with my friends. Uh huh. And then like. I mean, public, like, it's still not even really in my, like, Instagram bio, which doesn't make me less legit, but just to get a picture of, like, how, like, yeah. you know, it's you not, like... You haven't into that part yet. I yeah. can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you did the Tonight Show before the Instagram yeah. bio. That's pretty impressive. I know. Well, I just, I feel, yeah. And it's not because I'm, like, I love, I think people love to be, like, you're so brave, but it's, like, it's actually just, like, I don't perceive myself as somebody with agency. You know what I mean? Like, if you ask me, I'll do it tonight. Uh, uh, if you, yeah. but, but I'm not going to go put my pronoun on my own profile um, but but if in, like but if somebody in our career told me to i would do it like <laughs> that like i would just be like it doesn't matter what i want or sure yeah, yeah 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 when when did you come out to your parents as gay super pretty young i came out like when i was like uh like a junior in high school actually and what was their were they were they cool uh, my mom just started hysterically laughing, which like <laughs> the that's time, the one that's, time. That's the time she's that's like, the one really, time she yeah. laughed. Oh man, I don't think it was a joyous laugh. <laughs> yeah, it was just like that Breaking Bad. Remember when he gets caught with the yeah. drugs? And he's like, <laughs> he's like down in the. <laughs> yeah. it just that kind of like. Yeah, she well, she just had a really hard time saying gay, and she she kept being like. You're a gay, and then like just sort of kept doing that over and over again. Um, oh my god! And we landed on this like super like I never completely understood. Which she, I think she like quoted something her she had suspected for a long time. Like I was, you know, I was like beatboxing and popping. Like I would just seem <laughs> playing basketball. Like um, that's just like not what like any Asian kid is encouraged to be doing like yeah. in, in like our yeah. like yuppie Asian like circle. So it was what were, what were, what would women, Asian women do in that circle? Like what were the hobbies that would oh, be pursued? Something that I never, it never occurred to me as weird. Uh, figure skating was huge. Really? Yeah. yeah. I was wow. like, I was like telling my friend, I was like, I was like, and I never became a good figure skater. And they were like, wait, what? Wait, that's not <laughs> what something that everyone was doing. Yeah, was, <laughs> but a so lot funny. of, there was just like a big, I mean, hockey's big in Ann Arbor and then like in Michigan, Midwest. And there was like a big rink. So like a lot of people did like group ice skating lessons and that was like a cool and you know like china is really good at like skating so i think it felt i don't know like precision sports like feel really in line with like mm -hmm. whatever um but it was like skating piano i can't tell if i'm being so racist right now to like but but i'm just speaking the truth of this particular community yeah okay yeah. skating like piano is huge violin like tennis uh -huh. Um, just definitely not like basketball. Hip. And if you were going to dance, like you got to do like ballet tap. <clears throat> if you're feeling crazy or like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 This um, stuff was, was weird. Sure. Totally. My, my best friend in, in middle school, uh, he was Chinese and he, his name was Kevin too. Uh, there he, are a lot he, of, Kev are there a lot of Kevins? Oh, cause when you said that, I, you know, I just was like, Oh my God, my friend's Kevin. Oh no! Oh yeah. There's like there's nine million Kevin's. I, I used to have this punchline that was like, well, okay, this is like a. Just sorry that I'm like half doing my stand up, but this is just true. My dad was gonna name me. My mom named me Sabrina. My dad wanted to name me after like the rare earth metal Europium. <laughs> so bad. But I used to have this joke that was like still better. You know, like that. I'd be like, you know, because my brother. Yeah, yeah. I, better to be named the only person named Europium than yet another Asian boy named Kevin. And it, feel, it felt like everybody knew. Like, there's 9 million Asian Wait, is Kevins. there a reason? It just, it's, it's just, like, just literally so name. easy to pronounce. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's just, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> the sounds that are in the Chinese language, Kevin, easy. Like, Sure. Yeah. That's really that's really interesting. Uh, uh, I forget what I was going to say, but Kevin. Yeah, shout out to my friend you, Kevin Wong. School. He played piano. He was a soccer kid. But him and his sister, 
they they were like they played piano they were a star soccer players they were just incredibly disciplined and uh very nice parents that's the wedding i, I went took to in Hawaii. piano lessons for a year and a year um the woman was kind of crazy that was my piano teacher and i and i had a hard time telling my parents that i didn't like seeing her because she was crazy uh-huh. and finally i was able to be like a of all she i signed up for piano lessons and she was teaching me an organ and i was like i don't know when like i don't go to church so i don't know when this is going to come in handy like me learning how to play an organ you yeah know? so that was that was one thing and then the other thing i remember one time early on she was like trying to teach me how to play the organ upside down like she was like doing it like this and i was like i don't know how to play the organ like right way like i don't and finally so one day i finally i remember being like you know when you're like why I, why was i nervous but i finally told my parents i was like i don't want to do this anymore like i that woman scares me uh-huh. and uh they were like oh then fine like it was like i i don't know why i was not telling them yeah but anyways it, so i wasn't ever very what good was the most advanced thing you learned how to play I mean, I don't remember. I I'm, I can, I had to learn because I went to school for music later on. So I yeah. like have a very I can plunk chords and stuff now, but I can't like I'm not like, great at playing. You did know? you ever Did you ever take an instrument? Did I? I uh, yeah, I played I played piano. Yeah, but I uh, not very well. What was the most advanced? Yeah, but you're not very well. You're gonna be like I could just re- the first half of this one. I actually mean, uh, although yeah, yeah, I do mean this. Yeah, and I, you know what? I meant it all the other times too. Okay, sure, I feel sure. it deep in my yeah. Uh, I played piano classically until like the eighth grade, and That's then I like. But but cl- like you probably can. I can I can cite yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I can definitely. Like I'm, I, I'm I was, sorry that I'm like when this. When I was in middle, why are you apologizing, yeah. Sabrina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're apologizing so much. We, 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 we wanted you to be here. You're, I, you're was, fascinating. You're just telling us your life. I told you. I told myself that ten times. <laughs> so they, they asked me. They, they asked me. They want me here. You're, you're having a lot of yeah. success this year. You're gonna have to uh, deal with, with it, because people want you for things. Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> And you have this journal with you. I'm waiting for you to read like a journal entry to us. Uh, no, no, it's it's not even. What does it say? There's, it's just mixed things. But I I try. When the tr- crowd applauds so for you, do you say stop it, everybody? Sit no, down. No, at JFL, you know what I did? I didn't even say like thank you. I'm Sabrina Hula. I think I said okay, bye. And I <laughs> saw like I just kind of skedaddled off the stage. I was so um yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Everyone was talking about your set. You had a great set. And Everyone was-, was talking about your set. It was so it was amazing. The watch you see, I didn't I didn't denounce it at all. I accepted it completely. I okay. said I said okay, yeah, they you work. can do it. I I can. I've actually been practicing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you. Um, fantastic set, really. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> that was great. You're an actor too. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just that's that's me. After thank you so much. My voice goes yeah. three octaves higher than I want yeah. it to go. But yeah. But you started stand up at 16. How do you know that? I do, you know, I don't just oh, sorry, show up. Sorry, I'm just like, so like this is a thing I care about, and I figure since I bought all this shit, I might as well look up the guests a little bit before. Of I course, start. no, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank but you. But that's a, but starting you. at 16 is it sounds like in high school. Did you ever hang out with friends, or were you just doing hobbies and things? I have this theory that the number of hobbies somebody has directly correlates with like <laughs> how many friends they have. Like, uh, yeah, I didn't. I spent a lot of time alone. Like. <laughs> Like in the summers, I would say. Um, I I did do stand-up like when I was 16, but I wasn't like going and doing mics. Like the story was like, I didn't even know what stand-up was until like one night at like an Asian like dinner party. Like sometimes like a bunch of Asian families will get together and like have dinner and then like the parents will go sing like karaoke upstairs and the kids sort of like sort of forcibly are like there like I spend time together but we don't like really know or care about each other yeah. uh-huh. um but then I, we were all like should we watch hot and fluffy gabriel iglesias and like we were like i was <laughs> like this is the best thing i've ever seen yes, yes. and i was like and you know what i can make a lot of those sounds too yeah. i should oh yeah and then i that night was just like telling some story and then like somebody some guy who was also there his name was Kevin and he was like a cool, he was like a really cool guy he like played football like he was like he was like the maybe one of the most like idolized like young asian teens like in the uh-huh. community like everyone was like you have to be like Kevin like 
he plays football. Now it's that's like different, Kevin, but Mike he's Kevin's also playing. Yeah, 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 like yeah. star, like just like a star human being. But he was like, that was so funny what you just said, and you should do stand up. And so then, like months so later, like, okay, months later, I like, and I was too scared to sign up for the talent show, uh, like when it was time to sign up. And I like, but I was friends with the producer, and I just sort of begged her to like let me try it, like the night before the show. And then I did like twelve minutes of like. <sighs> <laughs> like, do I just did 12 straight minutes? I mean, was it the tightest I ever? No, but it, like, it actually, like, worked. Did you have it planned out? Like, did you know? Well, we that- actually have the audio from it right here. <laughs> you do uh, not. It's down. That is something I made sure it came down from the internet. But, uh, um, yeah, were you, were you, like, did you write it all out? Like, you. I definitely did it. I definitely just, like, type some. I, I feel like what I do even now where you just, like, you, it, like, lives in your head and yeah. you know. If you go on stage, something will come out. Any of, you. of those jokes still exist in your act? Any any version? If I, uh, not none that I'm like super proud of, but every now and then I'll pull them into a set and they'll how, still hold. How was it received? Like, how did it go over in the talent show? The first time. Also, how long was this talent show? If you were doing twelve minutes and you were a last minute. Yeah, edition? I think it was like two hours long. <laughs> <laughs> it was for a good cause, yeah, yeah. and yeah. There was no, no one, like, I mean, there was no concept of, like, don't run the light. Like, yeah, it was just, yeah, like, yeah. Those first shows are pretty, well, first of all, I just have to go back to that, this party. I just love the idea of a bunch of kids hanging out, all Asian, and they go, what should we watch? Hot and Fluffy by Gabriel Iglesias is a very specific, hot, what is it called? Was, hot and Fluffy? He was huge, Hot and though. Fluffy, yeah. He hot was, and Fluffy. He was huge for, But on like, what? What channel was it? Was on, it on? On Netflix. It was, like, Netflix was just, like, becoming a mm-hmm. thing. Obviously, none of us like pulled from our ass like we should watch Hot and Fluffy Gabriel Iglesias. We were just like scrolling, and one person was like, I heard that was pretty good. Yeah. And yeah. I had no, I was like, what even is this? Like, because it looked like the front cover of like a bag of popcorn. Have you seen it? I was like, I had no idea. Like, that, like, what there, there would it be like a man like- on a, in a microphone, like telling me funny things. I was just like, I fully pictured like popcorn. <laughs> like yeah it yeah. was crazy I yeah just, there, it's just that age for me it was when i saw uh, uh ralphie may where it's just that age where stand-up is magical where it's just like you're like everyone's laughing so hard just at someone talking and you're like how and then yeah it's just such a special time i just love those first moments does it has it lost its magic for you yeah for me it's really like I, if I watch it live and something's really, really good, I just feel uh, self hatred. I feel uh, I've, I'm filled with I suck. That's I'm, what I'm shocked that you're shocked. I'm this way. I always, got, I to be honest, I perceived you as somebody with a pretty, uh, yeah, uh, but all right. yeah, but no, no, but I mean, like, yeah, I saw, I, 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 I I'm like that. I, but that's when I see it live. That's why I struggle to watch like live entertainment. I think I feel deep envy and deep insecurity. I see. And I'm glad when when you you your JFL was uh, your show was before my JFL show. I didn't watch any of of you because I I didn't want I didn't want to feel insecure. I was backstage and I was it was so funny. I don't know if I said it this word. So Pete Holmes hosted both of ours. Yes, yeah. And he kind of said to our group. He was very supportive. I found him to he he did like I think exactly what you need to do in that role. He made I everyone he was feel so good, sweet, yeah. super sweet. And he said to our group, like kind of you know secretly and a little bit like the second show is usually like the even better. Like people, it's just like it's later. <laughs> Everyone's really excited. Yeah. Not like in a bad way. Like the first show's bad, and he could have just he could have said the same thing to your group and our group. But he was just like making us feel good. No, I just know what the energy was like at the second show. It was tough. Yeah. yeah. So so then he goes out for the second show and he comes back and he's like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they are tired. They, they are, are they are tired. tired. A lot of people, I guess, who went to the first show too, and oh, and I was at the, I was at the end. So like, of course, there was a sinking feeling of like, great. Of course, of course, that's yeah. what happens. Yeah, and then and yeah, they were tired. Yeah, for sure. And it was just very funny for him to be like, ah, ah, uh, <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and then luckily it it you know it it worked out. Yeah. In that moment, but um, when you when you have your pitch meetings, do you have to fight that voice where you want to go like you want to go to the pitch meeting? And you're like, oh, don't work with me. I don't. I haven't actually done a single like pitch meeting. Oh yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure I'll have to do that. You have a story. You have a show. 
I'm sure you have a show ready to go. You, you, you're Why so are much, you doing you're, that? There's so much to feel good thank, about. Thank you, John. I, and I feel, I feel good. I feel like. I think, I, I think it's that. Yeah. You have no ego. <laughs> and you deserve it. You were just on The Tonight Show and you had a great set. And then you the first thing was the one comment that said you looked nervous. That's part of your that's part of your charm in the set. Well, you wanted to walk out there like Eddie Murphy or no, like Fluffy. No, and I thought that top comment was great. That was funny. Oh, good. Great, good. great. Yeah. Uh, I I just have I've never asked for us. I've never tried helping a guest talk them up in my entire <laughs> life. When you walked in, I played the beatboxing. I was worried you were gonna cry, and I said, "Oh fuck, oh, I really, really fucked up." No, 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 not even. I'm like, no. Am I right? Did you think that you think? That did they I were about like to cry for a second? Cry? I didn't think tears. I thought, I did think it was a miscalculation <laughs> on your part. And I thought that it was maybe not the best way to start things. Um, <laughs> and I'm glad that I wasn't in on it. I'm glad that was very much your plan, not my plan. Uh, uh, I was just here. I so, really got to say, yeah. I, I think I have this idea of these sound cues like like being a comedic moment. And, I don't know one that's gone over well. They've all been met with, what? Why, 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 why you know are you what it is? like that? You know like, what it is? And I think it's I have the terrible impulse to like prank. You, to you prank. Wanna, you want to be on a prank I have, show. I have a terrible prank yeah. impulse. Uh, that I hold in, but that's what the I I was I, I went through a long phase like a phase where I should have been in therapy where yeah. where I would do the what's that on your shirt and I flick people's noses, and that's like, <laughs> and there is something about that where I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna trick you I'm gonna be superior to you by tricking you in this moment. Yeah. Why do I need that? Do you remember you uh, wanted <laughs> Do you remember you wanted to do a really long form prank years ago? Where you like? I wanted to tell. I'm a, we're on a sketch team together. You you were get, like you wanted to pull a prank on on one of the sketch team members, Chris. Chris, where you we you we and we were all in on it that you convinced him you were dating someone because I was I was a very like like non non committal, and then like you were gonna propose like, but it would I was gonna like for for months you were like, gonna I've make seen up this a fiance. girl and yeah I really you like were gonna her make and... up someone and then you were gonna like we were gonna build a sketch. Around it, where, where I was going to propose to this imaginary woman uh, uh, during the sketch, and I would have a, a ring and like an expensive Were you ring. In on this, was anyone in so, the sketch yeah, in on it? Well, so we he was. T- we talked about the plan of they it. They talked me out, and, of and, it. and and the joke was going to be that that he was going to give the ring to Chris to have like to leave hold it backstage. Like, oh, you need to bring it to me on stage for like this big and reveal, then and then I would hide, hide it, it, so he'd go backstage and think that he and lost. not be able to find it, and come back on stage just like. Like red faced and just like, and I would be like there, it was, you know, about to propose. It was such an elaborate plan, and I kept being like, "Wait, but this is months of work, and we have to write a sketch that the audience won't enjoy. They won't have any context of what's going on for this thing, oh, and fuck. it's just to make Chris feel really bad." And I was like, "I don't know if, I don't know if it's worth it for the months and months of work." Like you were gonna have to fake date someone. It was just a crazy like. Well, I think I think it's I think it's connected to something evil in me. Uh, the same way Ellen DeGeneres was really into pranks. Yeah. Like, I like... <laughs> listen, I really... I do I've believe this. I've always compared you to Ellen. <laughs> I really do think, though, that there's something about the the desire... Ellen loved doing... Uh, you're sitting and someone pops out of the box and scares you. And, like, I like I like scaring. I, 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 just, I get it. I get why that's funny. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, like, an evil strain of just, like, wanting to see someone just, like... Uh, to just fuck with someone. Okay. There's a feeling of like, okay, well. I, I think it, there's a, a fucked up, there's humor to it, but it's like also like there's a superiority because you're like, uh, look at that person. You're they playing, can't even help themselves. You're playing God. I'm playing God. Mm. There's no like, and then they laugh after and we share in that joy. But that's Do the you hope. Like the, okay. That's what I was hoping it with this, with the Hennessy with and the dog, the and it's failed miserably. <laughs> I expected you to be like, <laughs> my dog died yesterday. Yeah, you're right. That yeah. is funny. Um, <laughs> Wow, we really we one day you're gonna have to share your insecurities, you son of a bitch. I have insecurities. I feel like I share them all the time. Anyways. Um uh, Okay. So all right, we, we talked about we talked about tonight's show, we talked about uh uh so you're in New York, you're doing stand up. Feeling good about stand up? Feeling good now? Oh my god. You can't gauge how I'm doing off how I feel. What uh, makes you feel good? When are you happy? Uh, I've been feeling happy this week, actually. <laughs> Until the moment Until you walk into this apartment, the moment we hit record. Uh, um, uh, how's how's stand? Are you going on on the road at all? No, I'm not. And I I um, 
I've been doing like some longer sets like here and there. I just did like uh, like a half hour at like Bottle Rocket Social Hall in Pittsburgh. They're like, cool. do you know, I, I think it's no. like kind of new. It's, it's, inter- they're like, they've been booking more like Brooklyn comics. Um, and then just started doing college. Shift. I honestly like don't have like a super, like I don't have like a 45 that I like want to go on tour That's with. That's what the crowd work is for. <laughs> it's to fill in the time. I see. Go I do see. some crowd work sometime. No, come, I come. You you do. Uh, how about you? You do my show, Silver Lining, and you have you have my permission to f- to fail, and you c- do half crowd work. I'm down. Half my crowd work when I've ever done it is me apologizing for doing crowd work. <laughs> it's me sort of being like, I want you to know that I'm more scared of you than you are yeah. of me, and we're gonna do it. But like, it's not. It's mostly just filler about how I'm feeling during. <laughs> Uh, um, is this like the personality that you thought I had? Because I feel like we've walked by each other so many times, but we've never really like chatted. No, I I mean, I don't think I knew, but I think, I think that I didn't get a sense of you being nervous on The Tonight Show. So I'm surprised by the, the, the insecurity because I feel like it was a totally like polished, perfect Tonight Show set. That's really sweet. So... But now that I've met you, I'm, I'm going yeah, to go different. back and be like, I think, oh, their hand is shaking right there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. see a little stutter there. Um, um, but, yeah. So how, how how's things with your parents now? Oh, they're good. And I'm sorry, should I have added more to the stand-up thing? Like, I could die. No, I'm just, I'm just curious. Like, like, what about your, you said you have a brother. How's Kevin? Kevin's great. Kevin is Kevin is nice to me, but he is utterly useless on the train. I remember, like, because I, I come out to my parents. My parents did not take it well the first time. Then I called my brother to talk to him about it, and I was like, Kevin, I'm, like, trans. And he went, oh, I'm at my friend Andrew's house. I will call you back. And he never called me back. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh, Kevin. Oh, He's Kevin. just, like, a 21-year-old boy who's so sweet, but, like, mostly just, like, talks to me about his new favorite weed and like doesn't really like yeah yeah it's younger siblings younger, younger si- siblings younger are because i have younger siblings it's like listen as i've gotten older they become full adults but like my brother who's i think 19 you know i if i'm going to him with something heavily emotional i'm in trouble because he's not ready to carry that water i know and me. i should have known yeah. better and yeah uh have you gone gone to your brother for aunt? You have a nineteen year old, like he's nineteen right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, nineteen. If, if I fuck it up and he's twenty, I'll feel bad. But yeah, I think he's <clears throat> he's nineteen, just turned nineteen. He's he's uh, in his senior year at, at college in Boston. Definitely doesn't listen to this. I call him sometimes. You know, he's not he's not a talker. He's not a talker. Yeah. I gotta I gotta really kind of push it mm-hmm. out of him. But but uh, uh, I all sometimes if I have a new joke, I'll run it by him because he's like you know he likes comedy. Oh, he does? Okay. Like, yeah, like I think likes comedy. I don't know if he like loves stand-up, but like likes comedy in the way that a 19-year-old boy who has a Reddit account likes mm. comedy. Right. Mm-hmm. And will t- and will tell me the truth. And and yeah. uh uh but whenever he says whenever he says to me at the end of the phone call, whenever he says like love you bye, I feel very I feel moved. Cuz he's just he's a 19-year-old boy and I think like we're close enough for him to say that at least. I don't think that like comes to I don't think he's saying love you to a lot of his I don't think he's saying love you to his his dude friends and giving them a hug. Mm-hmm. Like we do, yeah. Because we're we we're do mature. do. Um, the yeah, my my brother's younger too, but he uh, we text a lot, but he's so quiet in real life. Uh, but um, we he does this thing sometimes where he sometimes I don't know if it's because he's younger or what, but he doesn't. He there's sometimes there should be a phone call about certain things, and he always texts, and he'll be like, "Did you hear about blah blah blah?" And like not then not respond like. You know, you just get a thing like, and it's like, mom's in the hospital. And you're like, wait, like, that's a call. That's a phone call. Mm-hmm. You know, like, so I feel like. That must be tough for you to like, deal with someone who is not fully communicative. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but he's, it's fun, It's funny too, because like just nailing down plans is harder than like, we'll text like four or five times a day sometimes about like, you know, random TV things or blah, blah, blah. And then you'll be like. Are you coming? Like he's literally coming this weekend, but I'm like, are you for sure coming this weekend? Like, and yeah. it's like he's kind of cagey about it, you know. What is what does Kevin do? He's like he's still a student. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does he see your co- like? Does he did he like go like what, tonight show? Cool. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, you know what? He was he was like, and he was like, mom, dad, I think you should react this time. 
That's we were nice. all together during yeah. it. Um, he was really excited about it. Yeah. And he was so happy that his name got said. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's he was cool. very honored yeah. about that. And then he's, and then he texted LOL. What does dad think? And did you, we've heard your, we've heard, I've heard your, your mom's responses. Now, what was your dad's response? Did I, oh, my dad and, uh, he, I didn't hear from him at all. And I thought maybe he's like super weird. And so sometimes I have a hard time telling if he's being transphobic or if he's just being weird. Mm. Um, and um, <laughs> That's a fun game show. Yeah. Transphobic or, or weird. Just weird. Like potentially like a little bit neuro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, great. So, uh, yeah. You can I say d- neurodivergent. You said it like know, it was a slur. I saw in the, descri- in the description that there was like people need to stop using on the spectrum incorrectly. And I'm like, I'm speculating, but I am genuinely oh, with full yeah. earnest speculating. Yeah. There might. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I didn't hear from for like weeks, which is like a little weird to not say anything to your child. It's extremely weird, I would say. Right. And then I was like, I think he is really, really mad at me. And then my mom got a surgery, so I called her to, like, check in on her. And then I heard from the background, my dad just yelled, like, is that Sabrina? Well, Sabrina, I love you, and I'm sorry, I have to go to the bathroom. And then just, like, went, shut the door, (laughs) and I didn't even hear him. So I I actually can't tell. He could still be in there. No, I'm sure he's done. (laughs) But but so he wasn't on the phone, he was in the background. That's a meta. Like he was like your mom was on the phone and oh. he was in the back. Or did he grab the phone? I love no, you. He just shouted like I'm so sorry and like it's such so a urgent. metaphor. Like he's not even on the phone. Yeah. Just from a, he can only say I love you in his own way from not even on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So that's tough. That's where we're at, and I think I you know I am I wish we could have like done this after Thanksgiving and I'd have more concrete information. But you, oh, do you yeah. like because you had such a great joke about your dad in the in the set that you know. I think the ideal response would be like, that's so cool. I love that joke. I know. The guy. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. tough. Do your parents say, do, you, do your parents like, do, do you feel like they get it? Like, did they saw Titanic? Yes. Did they, did it seem like they were like, wow, you yeah, killed it, son. Yeah, supportive, yeah. But they like understood like what you had done. I think so. They were genuinely excited when I told them like the the new news, and they both called and like were very like. Do you want to rub it in our faces anymore? <laughs> you have two people who don't have love from their parents. No, Maybe your parents you could know. watch their Tonight Show set uh, and, and give some feedback. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, they. I think they do. I think sometimes it's hard in what we do to explain when things are a big deal. Sometimes totally. it's like you know, like obviously the Tonight Show feels like one of the easiest ways you would think to be like, that's a big deal. Um, but sometimes it's hard. So I you don't think it's always what you're thinking it's going to get, but I feel like in general, they're very supportive. Yeah. You know, that's why for some, for some parents, it's money. You know, I feel like yeah, if some I parents, of, it's like, how much wow. are you making for this? You know, like, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. And, and <laughs> it's not a lot for and, late night. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Oh, great. This is why I had my journal. Oh, great. I Please really, tell I us can... your, this has got to stop. Oh my god! Okay, uh, okay, I, my number. Okay, uh, I I think we need to stop shaming people for liking animated porn. I, John Marco, have you already? You have you believe this? Uh, yeah, I I agree. Who's 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 doing the shaming? Wait, I just I maybe I just like grew up in uh, circles where I just, I feel like it's always like uh, I mean it's prudes, sure. it's prudes being like and and it's people. It's not overt. It's like it's not. No one's ever like you should be ashamed for loving like hentai. But it's always like ah, that like weird fuck likes hentai or like that sick mm-hmm. fuck likes hentai. Yeah. W- when I feel like animated porn is easily the most ethical porn to have ever been created. It's the most conservative. Like nobody. Like if 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 it's a sin to have sex, like this is this is the the one. I agree. I think it's like. I grew up, I was an anime manga kid. Yeah. And so, like, of course, I've seen some hentai in my life. I think it's one of these things where, first of all, people who don't watch hentai, what they do see is, like, the ads on Pornhub where well, it's, like, so Marge Simpson getting yeah. fucked by, by Scooby-Doo. Peter, by or, Peter Griffin. Is, uh, yeah. That, Douglas has that bit on, like, like on, like, the... 
the world's being mixed, like doesn't like it when it's like a Marge Simpson getting railed by Peter Griffin from Family Guy. Like it should You're not like, be. These are both married these are people. Different, these are different worlds, you know, like. Like, yeah, yeah. That, I think that's what a lot of people like see and think it that's, all is. I think that that's the majority of what people see. You think see majority if, people are upset about the crossover episode? No, no, no. no I just think they see that, like. What, what we would see if we're you, not watching it. When I was in high school, I was a big Dragon Ball Z fan. And I wasn't like a Sailor Moon fan, but there was like the famous like hentai thing that this is before I really like knew how to find porn on the internet. It's hard to imagine at a time yeah. uh, where I was doing like Google images and I turned the safe search off and that was what porn was. Dirty dad. Uh, <laughs> and it was called, I believe the hentai was called Sailor Moon X. And it was like, you know, uh, I think Sailor Moon's getting married to Goku, even though he's married to Chi Chi. And they ha- they all fuck. And I remember like later in life finding this porn. And it is the most poorly animated. It's like two stick figures, you know, like going in and out. Yeah. And that's that's the fucking. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I think people, that's what, it's still that thing where where people don't realize how, how uh what hentai have you seen? Be honest. We're we're being honest I, right I, now. I haven't. No one's listening. No, I haven't. I've, uh, I I'm 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 one of those people that the example would be the ads on the side of it. You never been curious. You never clicked on a video. No, no. I uh, not because of like it just never had the thoughts never. I had never been taken in that direction. Uh, sure, with porn. but you're also not a cartoon person. No, so that's why. So I'm not like a. I don't even watch that much animation. Like like there's like funny things that I would I haven't really watched because I can't get into it people also think that it's a lot of the octopus stuff what does that mean i feel like there's like a certain genre of like animated pornography where like the octopus is just doing everything to what are you a person like like the tentacles yeah yeah the tentacles okay that's like a that's a genre like i feel like that's like that's also people's understanding of like what cartoon porn is and i I think there is a genre even but if it's not a full like octopus, it's like an people, alien with like a bunch right? of tentacles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, animation lets you be more imaginative with what can, yeah. 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 But I'm, is there not live action tentacle porn? Live action tentacle porn? I don't porn. know. I, sorry, sorry. No. I, I haven't heard tentacle porn in a long time, so I, yeah. What, what is your, are you a, hent, so you're a hentai uh, fan? I, I would oh, imagine man. if you're. I, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, listen, no, I. You brought this. This wasn't me. This I time. know. To be honest, I thought this was gonna be more of like a rapid thing. Like I would just sort of say <laughs> it. You're not gonna I didn't even have to like it. really yeah. revel in what I had just said. Yeah, we like pull up a therapist to be like, so. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Um, okay. Okay. We'll, 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 I another can, one. I can. I can. I can talk. I'm not okay. It's completely honestly, I don't really watch that much porn. Period. Mm-hmm. Neither do. Neither do we. <laughs> Who does? And I, so I, I can't say I'm like a hentai head, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I do think I just love to like deeply think about, you know, and comment on yeah. what's happening in the world. And like, I, I guess think it is weird to have any sort of, uh, like when people have like judgments on like w- why certain things are just more accepted and, and normalized than others in, in porn categories. I'm just genuinely shocked it's not more popular. Okay, anyway, and like my main thing is like, I'm just always so scared. I'm like, how do I know this person isn't human trafficked? And I never have to worry about that yeah, with like, sure. yeah. Onichan, like she's not, she's not real. Like some guy yeah. drew her and like, I'm just, I guess a little bit shook that there isn't like a, conservative movement around like let's just animate this thing i do does like that, that feel it, crazy or no 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 nope. i, I okay, think if, if i ran a hentai site that would definitely be like none of our stars were trafficked here you can you can believe they're all yeah they're all of age the animator was 65 yeah you also don't have to rely on good actors that's the other thing i was like that's actually so the true. storytelling is a little bit better like yeah i would love to do I told you I once did an audiobook where I thought it was a regular audiobook, but it was like yeah. porn. And like I couldn't do it without giggling and I was alone. Yeah. But I would love to like I would love to do a voiceover role of like a hentai just for just to be in a booth, just to just once. Yeah. Like, oh <laughs> That's my That's that's how I do it. Yeah. Uh uh okay. Do you have another the one? I've, yeah, I have many. Okay, we go go rapid fire. We can do a rapid fire, we no, can change no, it up. No. Russell, your camera's recording, yeah? No. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna oh, kill you. I was gonna God. jump over this. Okay, this has got to stop. This and we can we can go deeper. I mean, these are all so stupid. Okay, uh, I oh I do think we need to we need to stop calling like queer people or people of color badass. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. There's a degree where it feels like a 
like would justification because- be a, a term that goes with it? We're just like a, like, yeah. Totally, but it's not always that guy who's saying it to me. Like, it will be like my high school teacher being like, "You were always like such a badass," and like, uh, I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, like yeah. you've met like every day of my goddamn life for the last decade. I've just been like, I I, I bump into something. I go, sorry, like so. I've yeah. been, I've been saying sorry. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know. For 10 years. I don't like, know. If I'm I'm a bad to pick ass. a couple adjectives for you. I don't know. Badass. Bad yeah. Ass. yeah. You're not listening to yeah. me. Like, Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> gonna say, "How is How is Sabrina as a guest? Bad ass." They walked in. Yeah. Uh, okay, I like that. Okay, that's fine. I like that. There's it's a, it's a weird, and I'm sure it's well intentioned. It feels but it's a just little like condescending a, to sometimes, maybe uh, to like lumping yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. into this category of badass. Totally, with, uh, you, it's like, you can be gay as lame as fuck. Yeah, you know, it can be boring. Of course, it's like it's so well intentioned, and I think it's like even my therapist has been like, I was like, I hate it when people call me badass or brave or courageous, and she was like. Oh really? Like, why? Why is that? And like, was like, take, like, because I think there is an impulse to be like, you know, like you existing is so hard, and like to validate, like, yeah, like I guess it was like harder for me to like go on the Tonight Show knowing like a lot of people were gonna comment on like who I am in a sure, way that yeah, like, yeah. but. I did it in such a cowardly way. Like, you know what I mean? And I, w- I want you to see that. Like, I want you to see everything in my, yeah. and that, that's just why I just think it's like, it, and it ultimately means nothing if you're just throwing it out to every yes. freaking. Yeah. I think especially like with stand up, it's like the only thing you correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the only way to like compliment the stand up is to be like, it was really funny. Like if someone says your stand up is brave, part of it's like, okay, but was it funny? I was going for, that was the goal. Yeah. Did you laugh? And if people say yeah. anything other than that, it feels just like, okay, that's not. Yeah. That wasn't, I wasn't like, oh God, yeah, that was my bravest set of all time. Yeah. You want it to be yeah. like, oh, that was funny. Yeah. So yeah. Totally. I, I think that. about that all the time. Ever since like I started talking about like, and, like if I just say the word trans now, just more than I used to, I get so many like after shows like, thank you. Like so many like, thank you for what yeah. you did up there. And I'm like, well, half the set I was talking about sliding like a tampon in between my two ass cheeks. But like, yeah. sure, like you're welcome for that. Like, yeah. I'm glad that was so whatever. <laughs> oh, like, that's but that's really like my funny. curmudgeon, like, you know, like it's also so sweet that they feel that way. I just like, I do find a way to make everything kind of a, a bad thing. Like, but no, but that, no, but that, that just makes like, sense. You, you want someone to say like, Oh, fuck that ass it, cheek tampon bit fucking kills me. It's also me. like yeah. something that a lot of people don't have to like it. It's kind of putting it on you of this like this like like you're doing this kind of role of uh, rather than a comedian who makes people laugh. And sometimes that's it. You know, some rather like there's just a lot of people that don't have to have that responsibility of like, you know, totally lead, like, yeah. And I think part of why I'm also like I feel stressed anytime someone's like, oh, you're like doing great. It's like. I just like, I think I just want to be stupid for like, like, I just want to be like so dumb. And I feel like so many comics are just like, dumb. just being dumb on stage. And yeah. I don't feel like I'm like that serious of a person, but like, you know, like I, I'm so grateful for everything that's happened, but like, it's not, I think it probably happens a lot to like people of color, like who are doing comedy or like writing or whatever, like half your meetings, like people will, you're like 20, like there's no way, like, you know what I mean? Like I barely read. I really like, I under treated 80. I don't read enough, uh-huh. but, but half the people I meet with are like, you know, you could really be the voice of a generation. Like how, like, how could I, do you know what I'm like? And I yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. think, which is so nice, but it's just like not true. And like that pressure, like really crushes me. I'm like, I don't like want to speak on behalf of like anyone ever. And this is like not a new thing, but it does like, it does eat away at me. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of, it's, but it's it's just that thing with this business. It's like you 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 ride whatever wave is given to you, and you just try to ride it well. And that's your responsibility as a comedian. If if you get if someone's like you're the voice of the generation, f- fine. If they give you a TV show, it gives you a chance to do good work, and you have to just ignore that part. I mean, it's it's a blessing and a curse. Totally, totally. Do I sound insane? Please cut this off. I sound insane. No, like, yeah, I don't yeah. think so at all. Okay. How, how, would that be, how would it be insane? What would I I'd be like? No, you, you sounds accurate. I'm sure I'm sure it's like a pressure you have to deal with. 
okay, fine, fine, fine. But you know what I mean? Like, it's not always like an amazing look to be like, yeah, all these people say like these really nice things about like a promising future. And I'm over here. Like, I hate that you say that to me, but yeah, no, I under, I mean, yeah. luckily for me, no one, no, I never have to deal with people coming out. Like it's brave of you up there yeah, yeah. as a straight white man to like <laughs> do stand up. You're like yeah. the billionth I yeah. saw today. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, we we do have to go uh, quickly. Do you have anyone more you want to say really quick? No, no, not at all. I, okay. I'm happy to wrap up whenever. I appreciate it. Let's, <laughs> oh, let's, as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> let's go to our last segment. You better count your blessings. Um, do you have a blessing you want to share us? <laughs> sure. Share us. Sure, That's sure. how quick I'm, we're going. We're skipping. We're skipping. Oh, words. Yeah, yeah. We'll, oh we'll sorry. No, 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 please. Oh, I'm just so grateful that my grandma cannot speak or read English or use her iPad. We still have a great relationship because she oh. knows so little about my life. Did your grandma watch the Tonight Show? No. No, wow. and she never will. That's wow. that's nice. Great. That's yeah. a good blessing. That's great. Did you have one you have to get off your chest? No, no. Okay, I'll, well, I'll, because we have a, we have a thing. We're yeah, yeah let, let's let's. let's all right, this is one. coming. This is coming out November twenty second. Anything you want to plug, Russell? Uh, no. Are you going to tell your news or no? I'll, I'll tell it on the next. Oh yeah. So uh, my blessing and news. Uh, I'm uh, joining the cast full time of Titanic the musical off Broadway. Uh, so I'll be starting shows there November twentieth through February. So and so eight shows a week. Uh, How long is the Dale contract Roth for? Theater. Uh, it's running right now till the end of February. Uh, we'll, we'll put a link in in the bio. Yes, but go come see, see Russell. Me. He's a he's eight amazing shows a week. musical. This is a big fucking deal. This is a, a big off Broadway. You haven't been off Broadway show since that Bachelorette show. And if this is a real one. Equal, <laughs> equal in importance. Yeah, yeah, these two yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, anything you want to plug? I don't think so. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. Your social media. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at a Sabrina Wu. And watch Sabrina's Tonight Show set. It yeah, was an excellent watch set. It. Oh, it yeah, was join excellent. the debate. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, join the debate. Talk about how, how confident they seemed. <laughs> and it seemed like they're ready to take over the Tonight Show. And, uh, and none of this brave shit. It was funny. It was a funny, a uh, very funny set. Um, oh, we didn't even talk about you knowing Amanda Gorman. We'll have you back. Uh, uh, I'm sure you'll never come back again. You'll never come back again. Uh, 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 for me, uh, uh, I'm going to be headlining this weekend. It's Thanksgiving weekend. DC Comedy Loft. This is my homecoming show. I grew up here. I got middle school friends, high school friends. Uh, please come out. They moved me to the big room. I hope it's not a mistake. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. DC Comedy Loft. And then the weekend after that, I'll be at the Stress Factory in uh, uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. I think that's the name of the city, Bridgeport. Uh, yeah. I heard it's a big room. I don't know what we're doing. We keep, you know, you finally get some fans and then they go, great, let's make the room way too big now. And uh, that's just, that's the name of the game. And, uh, uh, you know, normally I say something sad. Would you would you do just uh, just a hair of beatboxing oh, and then sure, it'll sure, lead sure. us into the music and then we'll go out. Okay. All right, that's that's really all Woo! I can get. Thank this you. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi.